Hello everyone, my name is Bo Xiang Wang and I'm from National Taiwan University. Today I'm going to present our work, Miniature Haptics, Experiencing Haptic Feedback Through Hand-Based and Embodied Avatars. Nowadays, many games utilize haptic feedback to make the player feel more immersive. In order to achieve full-body haptic feedback, we can use omnidirectional treadmills and haptic suits just like the one shown in the movie Ready Player One. However, that means that if we want to create haptic, full-body haptic feedbacks, we need to construct large systems such as haptic walker or VR omnidirectional treadmills, which can take out a lot of space and could cost a fortune. Also, some of the experiences are not practical to implement in full-body scale equipment. Many VR soccer applications offer authentic experiences using visual, visual feedbacks. However, there haven't been any haptic feedbacks with props due to the difficulty of automatically positioning the real-life props to give the player haptic sensation. Another experience that is difficult to implement using full-body sized equipment is the changing of the ground height just like in Parker. It is potentially dangerous to implement full-body sized platforms that can instantly change its height. Therefore, we propose miniature haptics, which is to provide miniaturized haptic feedbacks to hand-based avatars. Let's see how we can solve these problems with miniature haptics. Our first experience is a football game. We string the whole thing onto, onto the hand and use linear actuators to time the props that simulates the ball, which gives a haptic sensation of the ball sent towards the player. The next experience is to feel the changing of the ground's height. We implement this experience on Super Mario Bros. game where the platform moves as the ground height changes. We also created an experience of running in the mountains, where the user can run in open scene and feel the slow feedback with constant 2 degrees of freedom platform. As seen above, we created a new approach to providing haptic experiences. By shrinking the haptics to a much smaller scale, we can create haptic experiences that are otherwise not practical to create a full body scale. And it also simplifies the construction of the system. Now let's talk about reality work. There has been various methods studied on controlling virtual avatars using hand. We can mainly categorize them into three groups. One of them is marionette, which often measures the finger's tilting or position to decide certain parameters of the avatar, like how wide the mouth opens or how high the hands are raised. The downside of this method is weak avatar embodiment due to the out-of-body mapping. Another method is by mimicking glove puppets where the hands represent the avatar itself and the fingers are mapped to heads and two hands. And this helps with embodiment for the avatar due to the one-to-one -one mapping. The third method is through finger walking and uses two fingers to rep represent two legs, which provides haptic sensations similar to walking. It is also used for locomotion in VR. Powerworks has also combined the visual and audible feedbacks to provo provide immersion of walking in the snow. In this paper, we will focus on finger walking because it provides haptic sensations similar to walking and is easy to implement locomotion. There are also various ways to apply haptic to the hand, such as vibration, force, electric signal, texture, and temperature. All of these provide interesting haptic sensations and are suitable for miniature haptics. However, there is a key difference between these works and our work, and that is the presence of embodiment illusion. In previous works, the haptic sensation was perceived at body scale, which means we will feel that these haptics are applied to our hands only. In our work, however, the haptic sensation was perceived at hand-based avatar scale which means we will feel that these haptics are applied directly to our body as if our hand is the whole body. The embodiment illusion is an illusion of owning either a part of a body or an entire body other than one's own, which is what we want to achieve on our hands. 
In order to achieve this effect, we will need to answer three research questions. The first one is, does minor haptics provide embodiment illusion? And if it is feasible, how does one map full body haptic perception to the hand? And finally, how well does it work? We created an experience using miniature haptics and evaluate the experience. Let's start with the first question. Does miniature haptics provide embodiment illusion? Specifically, we want to know that when we apply haptic feedback to user's hand, will he feel that it is only on his hand or the feeling extend to other parts of the body? To answer this, we conducted a study where we explored two most common sensory receptors for the skin. One of them is thermal receptors, which detect changes in temperature. And another one is mechanical receptors, which detects mechanical forces like touch and wind. We created a virtual scene with desert and forest for user to walk around, and the user used touchpad to navigate the character. For the haptics, we prepared a heater fan and cooling fan that turns on depending on whether the character is in the desert or forest. During the study, the whole unit is covered in a black box, and the user cannot see through it. This ensures the user's feelings are through haptic sensations only. For each user in this study, we will first let him practice controlling the character by finger walking. And after that, we will compare two conditions, with and without haptics, and the order is counterbalanced. In each condition, the user can freely wander in the scene for a minute and feel the haptics in each environment. After that, the user will be asked to mark the area of the body that he feels the heat and wind. After that, he will answer a questionnaire. We recruited 16 users for this study. Here is the heat map of area where users think the head pit has covered. As we can see, the heat map showed a good distribution across the entire body, and none of the participants feel the haptics are only applied to the hand. This indicates that applying miniaturized haptic feedback to the hands help create embodiment illusion. And the result from the questionnaire showed that enjoyment, realism, and preference are all significantly better for with, ha with haptics than without them. So we have confirmed that it's feasible to create embodiment illusion on the hand. And we can go on to the next question. How can we map the full body haptic perception to the hand? For example, if we are given a skeleton and asked to map it onto the hand based on the haptic perception, would we map it to the hand like this or this? We conducted a study, a second study to find this out. Before starting the study, the user will be asked to use their fingers to walk on the table without demonstrations. We found that they started with either of these two poses. Therefore, we consider this as a var variable in the study. But in this talk, we will only talk about the results from the hand-closed post. For more information, please refer to our paper. Then, we would ask the users to do a skeletal mapping to map each part of the skeletal model to an area on the hand based on haptic sensation. And the user will mark the corresponding mapping onto a sheet with a hand drawn on it. The skeletal model is based on PrimeSense skeletal model and represents all main body features. In the skeletal model, there are two kinds of data, areas and points. Areas are drawn in rectangle in the model, and there are 10 of them. We collect users' drawings and overlay them as a heat map. Joints are drawn as circles in the model, and there are 13 of them. We collect users' drawings and convert them to a custom coordinate system based on the hand structure. We then average all users' coordinate and use it as the final mapping for the joint. After the skeletal mapping, we will do the self-validation parts to ensure the perceived haptics get mapped back to the body parts. We will blindfold the user and use the end of the pen to tap the part of the skeletal model based on their own drawing. They will be asked which part of the skeleton is tapped. Each part will tap three times to reduce the outliers, and there will be two tapping sessions, one for each pose. And there are a total of 20 users participated in this study result in 2,760 taps total. The order of the taps and poses are randomized. And this heat map shows the skeletal mapping for the hand closed pose. Higher opacity in indicates more users mapped to that location. 
the red dots shows average coordinate of each joint, and the dotted lines represent the four limbs. Some of the major body features include two legs are mapped to the index and middle fingers, with feet on the tip of the finger, knee on the first joint, and hip on the joint between palm and finger. The torso is mapped to the back of the hand, and the head is mapped to the wrist. The left hand is on the thumb, and the right hand is scattered between the ring and pinky finger. After the mapping, we proceed to the self-validation step. To quantify how well user can map haptics back to the skeleton, we measure the error in error distance, which is the number of body segments and joints from the ground truth to the location reported by the user. For example, in a trial, the tester pokes left hip and the user reported that he feels the left lean has been poked. Then the error distance is 2 for this trial because the distance is 2 parts away from left hip to left knee. And this is the result error of error distance for each of the body parts. Darker color means the validation is more accurate. We can see that most parts are low in error distance except for the upper limbs. The average error distance is only 0.23 parts, which means the user can map the haptic feeling to the skeletal model fairly accurately. So based on these results, we designed a football game that provides haptic feedback to the head and feet to evaluate the ex user experience of miniature haptics. In the game, there will be football pass to the player and player has to move left or right to return the ball. The ball will arrive in one of the six positions and comes as two heights. The higher ball will be need to return by heading and lower ball will be need to, need to return by kicking. The user will be looking at this scene during the study. We compared three interaction methods, game controller with vibration feedback, finger working without props, and our work miniature haptics. For the hardware, we set up six linear actuators with balls in front of each one to provide the haptic feedback to the player. And the position of the balls are timed with gaming scene. On each ball, there is a layer of aluminum foil as touch sensor to detect whether the user has actually touched the box. We use the Vicon Viral Motion Camera to track the user's hand position, and there are three sets of Vicon markers to de detect the position of the user's head, left feet, and right feet. We started this study by inviting the user to play with real-size football to refresh their experience. Then, we let the user play the game using each of the three interaction methods. User will practice 12 balls before playing with 18 balls for each method and the order was counterbalanced. Finally, they will answer the question new. We, recruit, we recruited 12 participants for this study and the result for miniature haptics is positive. It was rated as the most enjoyable, most real and most intuitive interaction method of the three and the difference is significant for enjoy and realism. Furthermore, miniature haptics was voted as the most preferred method among the three, which had 58% of the votes. Besides football, we also developed two more applications to explore possibilities of miniature haptics. The first one is Super Mario Bros. game. It, in this experience, we use the Falcon haptic device as a moving platform that moves up and down based on the ground height. On the device, we use a touchpad to track finger walking and a limb motion to track air movement such as jumping. The second one is the mountain runner, which changes slope as the character runs through a mountain forest. We built a custom 2 degrees of freedom platform with linear actuators. Our prototype supports up to 30 degrees of tilting for roll and pitch. We have proposed miniature haptics, which is a new approach to providing haptic experiences by applying miniaturized haptic feedback to hand-based and embodied avatars. We conducted a series of studies to show the approach is feasible and significantly improves the user experience. We provided a skeletal model mapping that helps future designers and researchers design haptic experiences. And most importantly, we opened up opportunity to explore and and research into new haptic experiences that have not been possible before. And this is the end of my talk. Thank you for listening.